it just feels like, you know, like you get to be an explorer. And I think it's cool that there's still exploration to be done. it was very different than what I thought it was going to be. I kind of in my head thought that I would be working all of the time and we did we work 12 hour shifts but there was plenty of time to go outside and look at the scenery. This is my second time going on a research cruise to Antarctica. We set sail from Chile and then it takes about 10-ish days to get to our study area. While we're there, we're just constantly working as long as there isn't bad weather. We would do a sediment coring some days. Okay, I'll be, we're out of the water. So we basically had a diverse team of geologists, geophysicists, and oceanographers. And then we had the crew and the marine techs who would help us execute the types of sample collection we wanted to do. We had a lot of surprises this cruise. We checked the charts, we checked the um, nautical guides that we had with us, and we weren't able to find any record of that island. But we did talk to a few other people and get some satellite images, and then realized that that island had recently become exposed through retreat of the ice. Quates Glacier is the most rapidly changing large glacier on the planet. It's considered to be one of the three parts of Antarctica that are holding up the West Antarctic Ice Sheet. And just like a three-legged stool, if one of those legs is removed, then the whole system can become destabilized. It was exciting just to get off the boat and then exciting to be on the island. And then there was a seal there, so that was even more exciting. Dr. Wilner actually pointed it out. She said, there's a seal over there, and I went to go check it out and kind of get only a little bit closer than I was allowed to get. Right near Thwaites Glacier, you'll get this really fine-grained, silty clay mud. To look at is very plain, but it can chemically have a lot of information we want to have. But then if you go, say, 50 kilometers to the east, you can find this very green sediment where it's basically full of organic matter and um, diatoms, which are these little tiny plankton that live at the surface and then when they die they collect at the seafloor. That is a normal part of a lot of NSF work. The National Science Foundation, in addition to supporting science, is also interested in supporting education and outreach programs of a variety of types. I think I'm bringing home over a thousand samples. Well, most of these cruises collect enough samples for us to work on for several years. It feels strange. I think it hits me when I go outside and I just look at all the icebergs or the ice shell. And it feels very weird to be the first human being in a certain spot. Scientifically, I think the biggest thing I learned was that what's happening in one area can be completely opposite in an adjacent area that's only several kilometers away. I don't know, it felt like something I, I would never get to do, though I was amazed that I even got to go, especially like getting off the boat and going to the island and actually getting to say like, I stepped foot on Antarctica. Now I have this new goal of like, okay, get to all seven continents before 30. And like, that wasn't a goal beforehand, because I didn't even know I'd get to go to Antarctica.